Today we're going to be looking at if it's becoming too hot to make honey and are native stingless bees declining with climate change. So yes, I'm George um, and yeah, I'm in the Mayfield lab um, doing some bioscience research. So bees, everybody loves bees, they're really important pollinators, about 80 to 90 percent of flowering plants across the globe uh, make use of pollination in some form. Uh, and this is well known with crops. A lot of the stuff we eat uh, every day uh, is pollinated um, and so it's a massive aspect. And there's over 20,000 species of bees across the globe and 2,000 of these occur in Australia and are native to Australia. And unfortunately, bees and other insects are declining. I'm not sure if a few of you have heard of the insect Armageddon that we're currently experiencing and in Australia particularly, it's not very well researched uh, with declines in insects and especially native bees. So bees uh, feature an indigenous culture right across the, across the globe. Uh, they're, they're a very important part and this is uh, reflected in Australia especially with the Yolngu First Nation in East Arnhem Land. Uh, and honey is harvested, uh, it's known as kuku and the harvest is celebrated and it's spread throughout their culture in the dreamtime stories, the ceremonies, the song lines, and it's just very, it's an awesome part of their culture. And unfortunately, the kuku harvests have been diminishing in recent times, which is unprecedented in uh, recent generations. So there's a range of threats that are potentially causing these declines. Uh, one of these is uh, climate change. Uh, and that's causing things like tropical expansion and it's also affecting the phenology of flowering plants. Um, if you see in this diagram, the foraging period of bees uh, isn't very long. It can be for days or weeks of their bees' whole lifespan. And whether or not this overlaps with uh, flowering plants uh, while they're flowering, um, that affects their amount of diet options they've got. So if you see the, the sh shorter flowering uh, periods uh, that have been caused by climate change or earlier flowering periods which don't, don't overlap as much with when native bees are active, that's affecting how much options they have to diet on. Habitat loss is another threat uh, to native bees. Uh, a lot of Australia's remnant vegetation right across uh, has been uh, transformed for agriculture or has been turned into developments for urbanisation and this has caused fragmentation among a lot of native bee populations. And pesticides and insecticides, one of the things that uh, cop a lot of the blame for the decline in insects globally, particularly insecticides such as neonicotinoids and things like these, which uh, present themselves on the pollen and nectar of crops which come into contact with a lot of uh, bees and insects around the world. And invasive species, like a lot of people don't know that uh, the European honeybee is actually a pest species in Australia and although not well documented it can compete with native bees for flowering resources uh, and we might see an increase in native bees as a result of the varroa mite if anyone's been reading the news about that. So my study site as you might have seen before it's right up in the top of the Northern Territory on the homelands of the Bakira Aboriginal homelands in North East Unland and we've uh, been allocated three sites which are larger 205 meter 200 meter sites and these are where the harvest of traditional stingless bee honey occurs and within these sites uh, which are all distinct we've uh, randomly uh, allocated 25 meter smaller plots and within these plots we're doing transects to measure the plant diversity and abundance of flowering plants in the regions and we're also sweet netting to collect bee specimens and we've brought them back to the lab. And so in the lab we're doing DNA meta barcoding. It might sound a bit complex but I'll do my best to explain it. The, what we start off by doing is by giving the flowering plants barcodes uh, based on their genetic information. And from this, through the, the DNA sequencing of the plant species, we can create a reference library of all of the different <coughs> Uh, flowering plant species that occur in our study sites. And then we use this to track the bees to where the flowers that they're visiting using the pollen they carry. And how we do this is based on the pollen that the, the bees are carrying and we run them through the 
the computers uh, with the, and match the DNA sequences through DNA metabarcoding. And then this will give us the particular species and the composition of the pollen that the bees are carrying. And we can create a much uh, bigger picture with all of the different plants and all of the different pollinators and make a big network uh, of all the bee visitations. Uh, and we can see what uh, plants are particularly useful for a range of bee species, or we can identify vulnerabilities uh, with bees that might depend uh, heavily on a particular plant species. Uh, and one thing that this is helping us with is to collect baseline data for a longer term uh, monitoring of the region. Uh, as you can see in this table that I've uh, added in, that's all of the bee occurrences and observations and museum specimens right across Australia. So there's hundreds of thousands. Uh, and then when you get to the more remote areas uh, like the Northern Territory uh, and particularly around my study area in Arnhem Land and East Arnhem Land where my study sites are, uh, there's only 43 specimens or observations and a few of these are actually me already so there's really not much. Uh, and so from our uh, characterising the plant pollinator networks of the region, uh, we intend on identifying management strategies uh, that will relay back to the First Nations partners uh, through the research uh, and th this is, ties into our two-way knowledge exchange which has been a really important part of the process and they can implement these management strategies uh, on country. And as part of a longer term monitoring program, uh, we can continue, the, the, the gugu harvesting uh, continues for millennia to come. So thank you.